I think it's very good. Uh, you know, it was a real pleasure to be part of the event. It was good to exchange views with esteemed panelists. Always good to you know see what's happening in the industry and so on. So overall, a very good event. Thank you. See at uh, PNG India first. You know, I just want to kind of uh, we are really honored, privileged uh, that we have been on the Advantage Monitor number one on the Advantage Monitor for last six years, and we have been in the Supply Chain Masters list. You know, by Gartner for many years now. You know, so but that does not kind of make us complacent. To your specific question, you know, demand is something which is ever changing. We have something what we called as the fast framework. You know, F standing for what is the fast changing consumer demand because channels would change, the consumer habits would change. You know, SKUs would change. What is needed is the agility to be able to you know kind of respond to that demand. In our spirit of continuously improving ourselves, our philosophy is constructive disruption. You know, which ensures that we continue to have our competitive advantage. And what helps us to be able to address some of this is leveraging technology well. You know, so we today, for example, leverage uh, AI machine learning based models, which can help us tell in a reasonably accurate way as to how some of these demand trends are changing, basis the landscape changes that are happening, then helping us serve the needs of the consumers. Uh, you know, what we call as supply 3.0 with one key strategy being supply in full. You know, in the end, the supply chain needs to be end to end synchronized, uh, you know, to deliver better service at lower cost in cash. Any supply chain has to balance towards two conflicting objectives. First is ensuring that the shopper or the consumer needs are met all the time. And that fundamentally is the ability to be able to deliver what the consumer wants in full every time. You know, what we call as supply in full as part of our supply 3.0 strategy. But to do it, as you were mentioning, you know, with a cost and cash, which is also minimal or which is as less as possible. So how do you balance the two? It starts by first having the right supply network design to meet the needs of your customers, your channels and the evolving changes that are happening in the landscape. If the supply network design itself is right, so for example, maximizing the first mile, optimizing the last mile over last couple of years, we have increased our speed to market by about 35%. We have been able to optimize the last mile deliveries by about 25%, reducing cost, but at the same time, being able to deliver faster in a responsive way. So it helped us improve our agility, but at the same time, allowed us to deliver the responsiveness that was needed at a cost which is better than what we were doing before. So those are the two key strategies that I would say that the right supply network design, supported with the right technology infrastructure, getting the right forecast, and a responsive way to be able to deliver the goods can help you. There'll never be a perfect day when you will have 100% service at zero cost, but as close you can kind of get to that is what we owe to our shoppers and customers. Technology, data analysis, data insights is at the heart of PNG. We are a consumer company, we are a supply chain company. The starting point has to be what is the business problem you are trying to solve? So for example, if you are trying to create a better demand forecast, then understanding that what is the relevant data set to be able to generate that forecast, and then what is the right technology, you know, in this case, it could be AI ML, it could be something else, but understanding that what is the business problem, you know, and as an example, as I was sharing that, how does the forecast accuracy improve over a period of time? How does the model itself mature? Because things will change. What are the new variables that you need to add? You know, it's just one case in point. But this can transcend across the entire value chain in terms of different use cases that you know one can have and one needs to be ahead in terms of you know what's happening as i said constructive disruption is at the heart of what we do so how do you continuously disrupt yourself you know before somebody else can come and do it in a way which is constructive because disruption sometimes can have a negative tone to it you know but we believe in constructively disrupting ourselves to be able to stay ahead of the curve